Borders Gate 3, how is it? I like it so far. I really like it so far. So uh, you can definitely see the, uh, the engine influences from Divinity Original Sin 2. Larian has done a fantastic job of moving the D&D systems over to this engine. Um, one of my favorite things is that the skill checks, because in most other D&D video games that I've played, the skill checks and rolling the dice for anything is like located in like some fucking text combat log. Right? It's like, oh, your character yeah. tried to roll for this. It failed. It doesn't make it front and center, right? And then when you're playing actual D&D, you're rolling that shit and you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. We got to hit it. And everyone's like watching your dice. Like, it, your dice are the pivotal, like, object to watch. And in the computer games, it's just never that way. It's just relegated to the same place that, like, all the other RNG in the game is relegated. It's well, just like, it'll either, either hidden or, like, pushed off to the side somewhere. In uh, Baldur's Gate through or Baldur's Gate computer games, it would tell you that you failed a save and stuff like that. Yeah, but they didn't let you know that you were about to roll for one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Baldur's Gate three, there are moments like there was a an intimidation check that I had to make. I'm just like, yeah, you want to fucking try me? I will tear your eyeballs from your skull, motherfucker! And a di like a d twenty comes up and it says. Roll for persuasion. You're trying to hit at least a 13. And the, like, the only thing you have to do is just click your mouse, but like the dice is big. It's on the center of your screen. Everything else is like kind of grayed out in the background. And that's how you roll. And you're watching the thing tumble. You're like, come on, come on, come on. You and actually it, roll. Yeah. Yeah. You that's get, cool. Like, I mean, it's just a graphic, right? It's not. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, dice, but it's the idea that you're clicking a button. It's not just auto. Yeah. You're waiting there. Like, it's, it's the same kind of anxiousness where you roll dice in D&D &D and you're waiting for it to come to a stop. You're like, did I make it? Did I make it? Did I make it? And then it hits a 16 and you're like, yes! Yes! <laughs> Fuck yeah! And the like the, the screen fades out and the NPCs go, I think we're just going to leave. <laughs> and they walk off. You're like, Fuck yeah! It's like that same dopamine cycle of like loot boxes but without having to yes. put money into it. Yeah, do you exactly. have any do you have any pre-roll rituals like some people will blow on dice or like shake it a certain amount of times or do you have do you any rub kind of... your finger nicely before you <laughs> click that button what, usually usually what i do like in physical D, &D games is uh i will ask whoever's been rolling well that night for their dice and if they aren't superstitious they'll give them to me but most people are like no tom you're fucking cursed <laughs> I've seen people that had the idea that my 20 only has so many 20s in it. Yes. So after I roll like three 20s, I'm changing out my D20. Yeah. <laughs> D, like rolling straight 20s is a consumable resource. You only have so many of those in there. That's why there are some people who play D&D &D that don't like arbitrarily roll their dice. Like they save it for real game time because they don't want to burn all those D20s they've got. Or those nat 20s. I, I just cannot is, understand that logic. It's 